Bud, we have to get the kitchen cleaned up before I go on my fishing trip. Look at this mess. It's all your fault. You totally put this Linux computer on the kitchen sink. Oh, what's this? Oh! It's that thing I built in a uh, work shed, just like uh, Ashley Williams. This was the last time I went on a fishing trip. I was like, oh man, I really wish I had a way to hold a beer at my side while I fish, while standing up. So I went into the shed and I found these uh, two by four brace things. And then I wrapped two beer cans around it and I uh, made my belt buckle thing. I've got another fishing trip coming up in a week. I think it'd be cool if we took this and scanned it into the computer and made like, uh, made like a 3D printed version of it. We do like a Fusion 360 tutorial. I do feel kind of bad because I haven't made a video in a while, so this could be appropriate. I can clean my kitchen, then I can throw this in the garbage, and then I can have a new beer holder for my trip. Ben, it sounds like you're just using this as an excuse to take a break from cleaning. Yes. So I'm a peak Luddite. I don't have a digital dial caliper that I can switch from metric to imperial. I have two separate analog dial calipers, one for imperial and one for metric. Yeah, the metric one's kind of hard to read because every time you go, that's one millimeter. The dial is actually two millimeters. It's kind of weird, but of course the millimeters are much smaller. I'm gonna go with inches because your condo is in America, Michael Scott. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I measured was my belt. <laughs> After, you know, gaining the COVID-19. All right, so one of my belts was 1.1 inches. The other one, the one I'm wearing right now is 1.3. Now, I obviously want to go this to go on my belt, not inside the pants, because then it would like make a welt on my skin. So this is about 1.4. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll probably go like 1.4 again. But then I'll put a little nub on the bottom so that it kind of holds fast. It almost will act like a little bit of a spring. And then when we print it, we'll want to make sure that the print layer styrations go in this direction. Because if they go in this direction, things could snap off. All right, let's get this out onto a computer screen. Nice. Okay, well, this is... Oh, wait, is there anything here that's going to dox a project I'm working on? Let's see. Laser cats, calc, pet, fluke lock fix, large die holder watch. Flash Forge fix, Viper Pusher, Upboard, Quick Camera Mount, Def Lantern fix, Pothead, Cat Trimmer, Atari Lights. No, this all looks above board. Nothing to dox myself with here. Fishing poles, like most things in the world, are biased to people with right hands. So the crank is on the right, which means I'd be holding the pole in my left hand, which means when I drink a beer, I'm going to do it with my right hand, even though I typically drink beer with my left hand. But in this situation, I'm going to use my right hand. All right, so I'm going to switch to the front view. So let's imagine this is like looking through my butt so this is behind me looking forward and all right so i'm going to start let's go to create and create sketch so everything in fusion is based on a sketch now i'm not going to draw my butt but i'm going to select which plane i want to draw the sketch on now if i move this box thing you can see there's actually three dimensions so we want this one we want the profile because the that profile is going to represent like the belt on end. Actually, you know what I should do? I should actually draw the belt in. So let's do this. Let's start, we'll make a line, we'll go down. And what I say, one, let's go 1.4. Let's say the belt at most is gonna be 1.4. Whoa, is that inches? I guess I was zoomed in too far. All right, so we made a belt and see how it has a dimension on it? So if we want, we could change that to two inches. And it's parametric, so you could change that later and the rest of your design, in theory, would update with it. So let me, uh, let me stand up here. I'm going to measure the thickness of my belt. Uh-oh, I hope my neighbor doesn't look through the window. and She'd be like, what's Ben doing in there? Some sort of auto-erotic belt thing? It is 1.18 inches. What would we say? Probably like, maybe like 0.2, probably? Probably a little looser than that. So let's, well, let's actually draw it. So let's go 0.18. See that also has a define. Now we're gonna go down here. We can grab that and it should match. Now see how that one's not defined? So now if we adjust this one, it should change both. See that? That's the power of parametric design. All right, so there's our belt. Yeah, so I'm gonna call this sketch belt base. 
So when you start, you know, extrapolating or extruding, I should say, stuff in uh, Fusion, it's always based off a sketch. So we're going to use how the beer holder attaches to the belt as the basis for the design. So this is the belt itself. If I wanted to be really pedantic, I could uh, draw like a big circular belt, but I don't see the point of that. All right, so now I talked about how there could be like a clip down at the bottom. So let's do this. Let's freeform off of that. All right, so let's do this. Let's take this, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to type in 45 degrees. So now, see how the angle is locked, and now only the length can change. So now I'm going to go like that. Okay, and of course it might be a little further than that. Yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah, let me let me turn that off. Let me go back up here. So the 0.18 there. So let's do a tolerance of about 0.1. Now that should be more than enough. It might actually be too much. Of course, if this thing is a flat piece and the belt is curved, that also affects it because so the tolerance will change over distance. Okay, so now let's grab this. Let's go. I'm gonna go 45. And I'm doing that for a reason, which you can probably guess. Eh, it's not matching up. Eh, it's okay. We'll just wing it like winger. Now, I said I want to be really fancy and put a magnet. Well, what is the point? What would a magnet even do? I mean, gravity is going to hold this on my belt. So the reason there's a, a curve here, well, this here. Let's, so let's go down. Let's go about 0.2. Yeah, and we'll come back over here. Now, we want to also have you know, a rear portion, but we don't want it to be too thick because then it'll like, you know, it'll dig into my pants. So what'll happen is when you push this clip down, uh, this part will go around. Oh, shoot, I actually did that backwards. All right, yeah, that's what we want. Okay. So this is, let's do 135, which is just 45 in the other direction. Now up here, let's go back 0.1 and then straight down. There we go. Yes, now when you, so when you, when you push this down over your belt, this part here will go around the top of the belt and then it will kind of click back in here, which is why I was like, oh, we should have a magnet. What if William Shatner did a cover of Poker Face by Lady Gaga? Pa, 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 poker, poker face. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, uh, poker face. <sighs> Bud has been so whiny this morning. I don't know why. It's like, Bud, you don't, you don't have to work. All you have to do is like lay around and eat. And then every so often, well, of course, I'll squish you because squish that cat. But that's all you have to do. Good news. <laughs> Bud, seriously, take a chill pill. All right, so I'm kind of overshooting these, which isn't really the best way to do it, but it'll work. Because remember, this in here, this is going to be, this is going to be a gap. So let's, yeah. Okay, now up here, we need probably a decent amount of mass. Let's go up like 0.2, and we'll go over. And we also have to take into account, this is where the plastic will bend to go around the belt. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a, well, not that, probably not that big of a circle. Yeah, that could probably work. Okay, now you're not really supposed to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to trim what I don't need. Trim, trim, trim. Blue, blue, love is blue. Do, 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 do. Now, can you see what that's going to do? So this, this is where the belt is. So this, this will give it kind of like a place to pivot. So this will act as kind of like a little bit of a spring. And then, of course, I'm going to want to print this laying down so the styrations are going lengthwise. You know what? I'm going to change the position of that circle because I, I want there to be more mass at the top of the belt because that's where this thing actually sits. Let's do it like here. Let's go a little bit further, though. And let's go 0.2. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's trim what we don't need. I guess I could turn on the Roomba. 
activate the droids. That could be Bud's new friend. Here's your new, here's your new home, Bud. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm thinking for the belt base. So let's select all the profiles. And uh, let's do an extrusion. What do we have before? Looks like this was about 1.25 inches, 1 1.3. That's, yeah, let's go 1.5. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to um, symmetrical. So if we want to make it 1.5 thick, we go 0.75 per side. Boom, just like that. Now the clip probably makes a little bit more sense. Oh, wait, but this part won't work because that'll block the belt. Oops. <laughs> Uh, well, I think we can go back in time and actually make that disappear like looper. Uh, or worst case, we can just fix it. So let's just go here. Go 45. I'll type in 45, then hit tab to lock it in. There we go. Now this body's still here, but what we can do is we can just do another extrusion, which will cause a subtraction. So let's grab the stuff that we want to remove. Let's change the angle so we can see it easily. And then we're going to go over here, hit symmetric, and then just doesn't, you have to put in a measuring boom. And if we want to be really pedantic, we can represent the belt. Represent the belt. Same thing. I'll just do like a symmetric extrusion of epic proportions. Then if we want to be really silly, we can go and do a appearance and we can give it a color. Uh, fabric. Do I have this folder here? Light brown, sure, great. There, there's your belt. It's a nice tweed belt. So I'm going to call this clip, and we'll use this for the basis of the rest of it. So I'm just going to go over to Utilities, Make, click on the part, and you can actually send this right to a 3D printer program, but in this case, I'm going to save it as an STL because I need to go downstairs to do this. I do have a printer laying in the bedroom right now, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I don't have, I don't, well, I don't want to mess with Kira. I don't, one thing I don't like about Kira is it goes around capturing COM ports. And I, I'm always sticking random things into my computer. So having a program that captures COM ports when it's open kind of sucks. Uh, you're going to want to do millimeters. That's another nice thing I like about this. Um, I'm drawing this in inches, but it automatically is going to do millimeters for the 3D print STL output because that's what all the programs expect. And we'll just save it. I'm going to test print that before I continue to design, but let's think about this. Like if my belt is right there, right? So this clip goes here, but then where do you want the beard? Like if my hand's down here, it seems like the beard should actually be a little bit lower, kind of like a gunslinger, because that's a little bit awkward because I have to bend my elbow. The other thing I want to add is, so we'll have this, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the clip piece, then we'll have an interface for that'll come down a little bit. And then I'm going to use like a 22 millimeter skate bearing to interface the, uh, the uh, clip here to the actual beer holder. So the beer will actually hopefully stay straight with gravity as you walk. Here's the 3D printed piece. Let's try it on the belt buckle or pff, the belt buckle, the belt. Yeah, you want the beer to be right about here. What is that about? Eh. You're about five inches down. Okay, I'm gonna make a few changes before we move on. I'm going to add a fillet here, so it's a little easier to slip on and off the belt. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna change this fillet, I'm gonna make it bigger. So I'm gonna hit right click, edit feature, and I'm gonna make it 08, I think. And a little bit of a fillet right there. I think that will work just fine. And for strength, to add some mass to the thickness. A little bit right there, too. All right, so now we're going to change planes. Let's go this side here. I'm going to click on this and use this face to create a sketch. All right, so let's do this now. So I said five inches down. Well, actually, let's put the pivot point in first. Yeah, so if you got your standard 22 millimeter diameter, 7 millimeter thick, 8 millimeter center hole skate bearing, if you notice, um, most of it moves. So you've got a section here in the middle, and that's what you want to grab onto. 
So that's going to be, well, actually, in this case, I should use my metric dial caliper. That's going to be about 12. I think I'll do 11. I think I'll do 11 just to be safe. And then there's an outer area here that the other piece will grab onto. Let's give you about two millimeters. I'm gonna use a bog standard uh, 22 millimeter skate bearing. I'm gonna put it like down here, I think. So even though I'm in inches, I can type 22 millimeters. Yeah, although I'm gonna do 22.5 just so it fits properly. And the inside, I'm gonna do 7.5 millimeters. And then inside of that, I'll do 0.125 for a size six screw to hold it in place. So that's gonna be what holds the bearing in place. Back to my drawing, I'm gonna get the offset tool. So I'm gonna come in two millimeters here, negative two mm. I'm gonna draw an additional shape here, which is gonna be 11 mm. Okay, and those will be my contact surfaces. So the bearing will be captured by the portion that attaches to the belt clip and then the center of it will attach to the rotating drink holder. Well, that easily fits with inside this size. Let's go down here. Let's make a line like that, make sure it lines up. Okay, now we can use the dimension tool and say, okay, from here to here is what? And let's call it, let's call it 3.5. Eh, it's probably a bit much. Let's go 3.3. .3. Yeah, that looks better. Now I'm gonna need to, Connect this, well, actually let me turn off the body. All right, now we just see the sketch. Now we're gonna close that in like that. Now this is probably gonna be a separate piece because I printed that on the printer like that. Well, actually no, if this is the same width, we should be able to print this all as the same piece. So yeah, never mind. Because originally I thought, oh, I could have some screws like here, 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 here. However, we probably will want some sort of cap to actually hold this in place. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's finish the sketch. Let's grab the bearing like this. That would represent the bearing itself. And let's extrude it seven millimeters. So that represents the bearing. Although there's another way to represent the bearing. Check this out. Okay, let's take this, all right? Let's go seven millimeters. So that represents the 3D printed shaft that would be inside of it. Now uh, we can go insert, now McMaster car component. Now this will actually take us right to McMaster Car, the amazing website. Let's go bearing. Okay, it's gonna be a ball bearing. Can we not make this window bigger though? That kind of sucks. All right, so it's gonna be metric for shaft diameter, eight millimeters. Standard bearing type for housing outer diameter, 22 millimeters. And width, seven millimeters. So this is gonna give us Generic skate bearings, more or less. And let's see, these are these are sealed bearings. Doesn't really matter. Let's let's get this one here. So I think you go to is it step? Or actually does it matter? If we hit download, this should actually bring it into our well, let's make sure we have the right folder open. Oh, sat or step. Okay. Let's go step. Download. So now we have so pretty much everything in McMaster Car has a 3D part drawn for it. So this is actually the 3D part from McMaster Car. Pretty cool, huh? You just bring it right in off the web. It's gonna get in the general vicinity here. Should be good enough. Okay, hit return. I'm gonna hit this and then this, and then I'm gonna hit a line. A line? Oh no, the bearings are off in space. <laughs> They've been, oh, that's a component. Oh, okay, so I got align components. Okay, so this align components. There we go. Now for the mating surface, if we look at it on the end. Okay, so that's there. So if we hit that and that, that should align it. There we go. See how that works? And there's our, our uh, half millimeter, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, the half millimeter tolerance. And then we should see a little bit of opening tolerance around it. So yeah, we, we brought that part in for Master Car and now we can, it's like, oh, look, there it is. You can even bring in like screws and stuff and then you can like copy the teeth. It's pretty cool. 
It's a really neat feature. So to capture the skate bearing, you need to have some mass on either side of it. So we're gonna need a little bit of mass here too. So let's turn that bearing off. And let's turn off the inner shaft as well. So I think what we can do is we can probably, let's just get this. Let's do this. Let's take this. Let's go capture. Okay, we're going to capture. We captured the position of where we put the component, the component being the bearing itself. I'm going to convert this to a join so it'll actually combine with what we already have. And now the bearing sits on top of that. All right, so let's turn that off again. So we've got this face here. We probably want to take both of these faces. Let's go forward. Again, we're going to want a little bit of tolerance. I'll go 7.5 millimeters. Like that. Now see we have the rear lip to hold the bearing. Okay, now what we need is a way to hold the bearing in the front. But we also want to make sure that whatever holds the bearing in the front isn't going to inter interfere with our rotating uh, beer thing. Yeah, I'd be better put the screws on this side because then this side will be will be flush. So I'm actually going to go back a few steps. I'm going to go back one more step even. So yeah, there we go. All right, let's grab this and the flange and this, and we're going to extrude it. Now after we capture this, let's go 9.5 millimeters like that. Now if you look at it from the other side, we're going to subtract this flange so the bearing will fit. So what we're going to do a subtraction or a cut. 7.5 millimeters deep, right? And then we turn the bearing back on. We see that it sit, sits in that slot. And then the screws, we'll put the screws on this side because they'll just, this could be flapping in the breeze, flapping in the breeze. We also have to make sure that we're below the slip so we can actually attach them. So I'll just draw it right here, edit sketch. And let's just do a really cheap way of, yeah, let's go negative 0.15 inches then we'll do 0.1 uh, no we got to think about the yeah because you can't just put screws anywhere you have to make sure that you know the screw head will fit you have to make sure that the screwdriver will fit you have to make sure that the screwdriver has access to it on well, the other thing i'm going to do uh let's let's edit the sketch again and this piece will Bit like that. So th this is going to be like an extra little cap that we make. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab these screw holes and we're going to extrude them, do a cut into the main thickness here. And let's see. They pretty much go all the way through because we also have to think what size screws do we have. So let's turn off this body because otherwise when we extrude it'll uh, It'll connect to the other body. So let's go negative 0.2. That way we can use a half inch long screw. That should work. So see, we'll still have room to put the belt through. So now this side is perfectly smooth. Yeah, something else we can do, we can come down here and fillet this. Well, here, let's, now can, now, can we fill it end chamfer? Oh, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 0.1, okay. And then just to be fancy smancy, we'll do it here too. Maybe I should print another one of these for my uncle. I'm sure he'd love it. Hopefully it doesn't fall in the lake this time. It's a little too old to be falling into lakes. Oh, I'm sorry, ponds. Okay, now we had that other interface piece right there. So now what we need to do with our interface or whatever connects to the beer holding device. And by device, I mean piece of plastic. We need to bring this out. Uh, yeah, so we could actually create another sketch. So yeah, let's turn this sketch off. Let's take this sketch. I'm going to go create sketch again. So we've made, it, we've made another sketch. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here. Uh, I don't know, like two millimeters, negative two millimeters. It's probably a little too big. One millimeter. All right, let's get rid of the bearing. But we ha we still have this piece here. So now what we can do is we can take this and we can extrude it. Well, actually, before we extrude it, sorry about that. Let's do another measurement. Let's put put the bearing back in place. Get rid of the sketches. And we're going to measure. So I'm going to get the measure tool. 
uh, okay, inspect. Okay, so here to here is a depth of 0984 blah, blah, blah. Okay, now I can go over here and just click on that. And it'll copy it to my clipboard. So I'll turn the sketch back on. I take this. I'm going to get rid of the bearing. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that. Well, everything except for the plug, right? So now I'm going to extrude that, that distance, and that will be the difference. So negative, negative the number we copied. See how it butts up? And now that should be, okay, they didn't connect for some reason, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Oh, wait, I just thought of something. That's probably, uh, yeah, it's just barely touching. Okay, so we're going to want to do something a little bit different for that. Remember that 11 millimeter thing that we drew earlier, which I think is there? Yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's take that. We're going to extrude that. Let's get rid of that, but add this, right? Oh, sorry. Actually, before we do that, let's, let's go back to the last extrusion that we just made, which is this one. I'm going to hit Edit Feature. And we're going to go a little shy of it because we don't want to, we don't want to compress against the sides of the bearing. We just want to compress against the inner, the inner uh, rotating parts. Let's go 08, right? All right. So now we have that. So now let's take this. Now we can, me we can measure the distance from the sketch. So we take this, which is our 11 millimeter interface piece and that 0.294 inches. Copy that. Okay. Take this, take this and we're going to want to extrude it, but we're going to, turn this one off so we don't combine to it. And then we're gonna go the distance that we just talked about. Okay. Now we also have to think, oh, well, obviously this is too long now. So what we'll do is we'll turn this off. Where's our little inner portion? Come on, little inner portion. Happy little cogs. We made this 7.5, I believe. And you always wanna have a little tolerance just for assembly and also well, the 3D prints are never perfect, let's be honest. So let's turn this one back on. And let's re-extrude to subtract the difference. Cool. Now, we, so, yeah, okay, now see how we have got a little bit of a flange there? So that's what we want. Although I think we could probably also fill it in. Okay, and then we'll connect it to this, well, no, I'm sorry, not to this portion. Now the profile view will probably make a little bit more sense. See. So we're only compressing the plastic under the inner portion of the bearing that rotates. That way we're not intersecting with the other parts that rotate because obviously there's two mating sections to a bearing. Same deal, we can't leave this gap in here. So let's get that measurement and then we'll extrude this out to match that. So extrude that distance. Yeah, so this needed to come out a little bit more as well. But that's how we'll hold, we'll also, we'll also need a plug on the other side as well. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go modify, combine, target body, tool body. This will be the tool. We don't wanna keep the tools because we want them to connect to each other. And see, we're actually gonna need a piece on the other side as well to cap it in place. So let's get rid of that. Let's turn on, I believe, this sketch. So we're also gonna to wanna to extrude this out. Um, not too far. That'd probably work. Let's see, how's that, how's that gonna, because we want it to be a little inset so it doesn't hit my jeans. That should work. Uh, make sure that's a new body. So I'm gonna, all right, new body. We'll call that shaft cap. So what we'll do when the bearing's in place here, we'll, um, we'll put this cap on, then we'll put a screw through it and that will lock the center of the bearing to this piece here, the rotational piece. Okay, finally got it. <laughs> then we're gonna wanna come in with this outer ring. Let's turn off the clip so we can see it. And we don't wanna go all the way to the bearing, just uh, well, close to it, but not all the way. And then just to make it a little safer, we'll give it a chamfer just to avoid rubbing. All right, that should capture the bearing pretty well. So on this side, we'll need to extend this out a little bit and that'll be what we actually attach to. So let's grab all this crap and let's go, I don't know, one millimeter out. It should sit a little proud. Again, this thing, remember this thing isn't really that big, so it looks a lot bigger on screen than it will be in person. 
it's probably a little sloppy, but I'll make another sketch here. And this will be what actually attaches to the beer to the beer thing. So create sketch. Well, the beer things, well, let's give it, let's actually give this a little bit of chunk. And clunk. Okay, so that's the part that's gonna rotate. So I drew a line here, five inches from the top of the clip down to where the beer will be. And I think that was like where my fingers will grab it. Yeah, so this is where the top of the beer can should be. So let's do, let's do something. Now the beer needs to be right here. So we need to create a sketch in place because we're gonna wanna do a revolve and do like a cylinder around the beer. So if the beer, what well, we say, three inches for the diameter of the beer, or the, the soda or the milk or whatever it is you're gonna drink, three inches, you're probably gonna want like a wall of at least like probably an eighth inch. So that would actually be 3.25 inches outer diameter of whatever it is we're about to draw. This swing arm is gonna have to have some mass as well. Let's say eh, probably at least a quarter inch. It's gonna take forever to print. It's okay, I have a million printers, thanks to uh, Anycubic who keeps sending me review units. So let's do that. Now we're gonna do another cheat here. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna create a face here, or I'm sorry, a sketch. Okay, so now if this is where the beer, this is where the fish lives. All right, so <laughs> what do we say, three point, uh, well, but no, we've got this. This can act as part of the wall, so we, yeah, let's do this. Let's do uh, three inches. Okay, that's, that's the outer diameter of the beer. Eighth inch wall, that should be sufficient. Yeah, maybe 0.2. Okay, so now we should have two points there. Now the beer will stick up a little bit. So what was like 4.8 inches? So I'm gonna make this about, we can actually grab this here. Go about three and a half, 3.5 down. So I'm drawing a profile view of where the beer will sit. Of course, there needs to be a bottom to this. Actually, it was just at Farm and Fleet, and I, I tried to see if they had any uh, reloading equipment, like for bullets, because I wanted to see if I could just get like some chunks of lead to weight it down. Because... It's like, oh, well, your beer weighs 12 ounces. But yeah, not when it's almost empty, though. So I'd like a little extra weight to make this thing, you know, when, when your beer's almost empty, you know, after like one minute in Wisconsin. Ah, oh, man, I should probably make this one a quarter inch as well. Uh, it's not that much different. There, that'll just make this easier to do when the time comes. See, well, what I'm going to do is, I'm, it's really simple. I'm going to take this and I'm going to do a revolve. So we can go to create. Oh, we had to be under solid. Create, revolve. So we got that face. I'm going to do the axes of the center. 360, boom. See, just like that. Oh, I guess I should I could go get a bunch of washers, maybe? I could go, you know where? Save big money at Menards. What it really should be is, spend all your money at Menards. Menards is your place for, for home gardening and stuff, and blah, 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 and get your home gardening equipment. Well, my memory... Travels round her, Blue Ridge Maiden, stranger to blue water. We're gonna also wanna have some drain holes when you spill your beer. Cause you're a drunk Wisconsin night. Menards washers? These aren't the washers I'm looking for. Menards washer bolt. Hard to find fasteners. I don't want Amazon. I want washers. Flat washers. Oh, I, well, I should have typed in flat washers, not washing machines. I have a washing machine. Oh, no, it's zinc. You're going to live in a world without zinc. Now, oh, these should work. Two inch outer diameter, 13 16 inner diameter, which is almost an inch. Thickness, eh, call it 0.15 inches. I'll probably call it 0.16 because Menards. Underneath, underneath your clothes, there's an endless story. It's like, now he's singing Shakira songs. It's like, oh, my, what's wrong with this guy? All right, so point, eh, call it 6.5. This is, this is where the washer fish lives. Okay. 
Oh man, that's a look at that's a lot of washers. I suppose I could go like tear apart some shotgun shells and uh you know use that. I actually did that for uh I think it was on the show. Yeah, we did uh what was it? Uh oh I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, it was for that uh arcade accessibility thing. We actually oh we actually used uh lead shot to weight it. And we'll probably actually need to have some screws here because you know, we can't print it with the washers in place, so I'll add some screws down here. I'll I'll do that later. All right, there's a reason I put a split down the middle. It's because I need to do a revolve again. Let's go to revolve. Select the center axis, 360 degrees. Oh, we'll also have to make sure the drain holes go into that as well. And guess what? I'm going to make another sketch. Yes, that's right. I just can't stop making sketches. I'm addicted. Might as well face it. You like to think that you're immune to the stuff. Oh, yeah. Closer to the truth to say you can't get enough. Of the, you might as well face it. You're addicted to sketches. I'm going to do use size four for this. So let's put, we only need one. So let's take this. Oh, wait. Thought of something else. Uh, we need to make an, uh, on the outside, it has to be, it has to have, it have an inset. So. Yeah. Oh, here. Okay, let's be extra fancy. Let's church this up a bit. I like that. Go right to the edge. We'll come down here. Go right there. Come on. No, happy little clouds. I've been present for the birth of every creature on this island. Blah, blah, blah. Finish sketch. Oh, I forgot to remove the center of the Tootsie Roll Olipop. I removed it. Now I'm going to put some mass back in so the screw has something to grab onto. And we'll just assume a half inch screw again. So I'll go like, oh shoot, we have to, t oh, that, that's okay. We can fix that. Let's go down. Let's go quarter inch. Uh oh, look at that. That's all right. Uh, yeah, let's go back over here. Let's get the sketch. Okay, it's time to go to the hacky school of hackery, the Ben Heck Hack School of Hackery. Finish your education in three months instead of 10 years at the Ben Heck School of Hackery. Revolve. And then I'm going to turn that on. Oh, now it's going to cut that piece off. See? Oh, no. We got a visible screw hole. All right. You know what I'm going to do? Okay, let's turn this off. We should, this should work. We'll hit edit feature and we'll change the amount we went down. Let's go like point. Two. and see how everything else well wait now the head of the screw is going to stick out the side so i need to go even further down never mind edit feature uh i guess i guess just an eighth of an inch all right that should be somewhat acceptable okay now here's where the magic happens we're going to click this 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 we're going to click all those things like what we ended up creating make sure we get this now we're going to go to circular pattern. We've got our objects. I'm going to hit the axes. And then we're going to say we want, I'm sure four will be enough. No, let's make it look, let's make it look super industrial. Six. Boom. See? Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? This is the world's most over-engineered beer holder ever. So when we make the actual thing that holds the beer, we'll do the same thing. We'll put the screw holes up into it, and then we'll repeat those. All right. I'm going to select this. Uh, same thing. I'm just going to do a revolve. So I'm going to get these. When you do multiple, you have to click, click, and then hold shift to get additional ones. Create, revolve, just like we did before. Axes in the center. So it's going to join. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Join to that. Let's turn that off. So let's call this the cup. It's the cup that held the blood of Jesus Christ at the crucifixion. I should have mailed it to the Marx Brothers. I came here to save you, Dad. Yeah? And who's going to save you, Junior? <laughs> so now, yeah, obviously, we want to have a handy, uh, you know, so we can grab the beer a little bit easier. So we'll do that. See? Nice. Just a little bit of love. That should be enough love. Now we had this piece here, which we didn't quite complete. So let's bring that back. 
Uh, let's turn off the bearing. We might want to actually make that a separate piece just based off how we're going to 3D print this. So let's turn that off for now. Just for now, let's take this, extrude it, 0.25. That should combine. That should all be one object, which, we could, yeah, we can print, yeah, we'll print it in this orientation. Now we should, this should be a separate surface. So let's go down here, let's go inspect. Let's get this distance, which is wrong. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to calculate that a different way. That's 3.5 plus, all right, so it's 3.625. All right, so this is taking much longer than that cup that I built in the shed. Wait, how come we didn't get two of those? What the heck? Yeah, let's do them one at a time. 3.625, 3.625. Down here, let's take this. What was it? It was, uh, all we had was an eighth inch. So if we want a half inch screw, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter how far we go because the screw's not going to go that far anyway. Same thing. We're going to put that in there. Oh, what's that? Oh, no. Oh, I missed something. There was a little sliver that I didn't get. See that? Turn off the sketch. Get just the thing like that. Axes is going to be this, and we're going to want to do six again, and they should line up the same way they did before. See that? Pretty cool. And also, I was thinking uh, this this sketch right here, this is the best place to put in our drain holes, actually. So again, let's go into Edit Sketch, and we've got our our washer area here. Me dress up as a washerwoman. Oh dear, Toad's going into the Wildwood. Although I don't think we want that right next to the screw. The screw, which could be a turning of the screw. Eh, what was there, six of them? So that's 36 divided by 60, 60 degrees. So we want that at 30 degrees. So let's take this. And how I'm going now. Huh? Oh, you're going to be like that, huh? Okay, so 180 minus 30 is 150. Yes, these are... Not even the Hoover Dam has drain holes that are this precisely aligned. These blast marks, too precise for a stormtrooper. Wait, are, are you serious right now, Obi-Wan Kenobi? What do you mean? It, it, stormtroopers, like, completely suck. They miss, they miss every shot. Like, wh why even give them guns? I mean, what's the point? Objects, axes, and then six. We're doing six to make sure that it misaligns with the screw holes. Oh, that is so overdone. I love it. Oh, and then we also have to make sure that we add in our floor. I forgot to do that. So we're going to do another revolve here. And we're going to turn on the cup so it combines with that. Like so. And then same deal, we're going to have to put the drain hole into that and then do another circular pattern. So let's turn that off, hit that. All right. Oh, that's not the best, that's not the best reference for circular patterns. So let's grab this. Oh, we can, oh, we can, oh, duh, we can use the center point of the cup, axes, but can we? There we go. That'll work. And we still have to connect this to here, although, if we print it like this, that means you're going to have a really tall thing of support materials. So I think it's better off to make it a separate piece. Now let's see. Let's get the distance. So here, there to there is well, 0.25 inches. Duh. All right, so let's turn off the cup. Let's extend this 0.25 inches. That'll bring it out to the edge. Yeah, I guess we could possibly make a screw go through the whole thing. Where's Remember, because we have that shaft cap as well. What's this? Well, wait, no, that just makes it flush. We got to go a little further yet. <laughs> Great sketch. So we'll make a slightly larger portion, like one inch like that. I'm going to go out, yeah, 0.2. Yeah, like that. And then, yeah. So what I think I'll do is I'll glue this in place, and then I'll screw into the other side. So it'll screw it and glue it, as we always said on the show. Although I want to have, I'm, I'm going to press and pull this just a little bit, just so we have enough tolerance. 
And also, assuming I stick it through on this side, I'm going to put a little bit of a chamfer to help the part go through. I don't think I need that much of a chamfer. So I'll call this the, the linkage. That part will go through there. It'll bolt in place, or it'll be glued in place. Then, you, once you put it into the main clip with, with the bearing, then you put the shaft cap on, and you run a screw here into that. And then let's shame for this so it doesn't, my hands, no, not, fillets don't always look super great on a 3D printer. Sh uh, chamfers look better. Rotating belt clip, rotating, rotating beer cup, no, gravi gravity rotating beer clip for belt. That's, oh, I guess I got to put this on Thingiverse, don't I? Well, the next step, I'm going to export these all as individual STLs. I'll start printing them probably on multiple printers. And then while that is printing, I will go to Menards and buy those washers. I'll have to email myself the SKU, make sure I get the right ones. Then, uh, then we can hopefully assemble it. And then I could put a beer in it or a soda because it's only 3.52 in the afternoon. All right. I used four different printers to print this as quickly as I could. But this part still took like 10 hours. At first I was going to print it like this, but then I realized if I had layer lines here, this could break off. So I printed it like this, so you have strands going this direction, which will make it much stronger. So yeah, the orientation in which you print things is important. So this is filled with ah, support material. There's a lot to clean up on this one. See? I'm, oh no, look at my, my messy mat is even messier. It's going to require a lot of cleanup. Maybe I should make sure that it's going to work first <laughs> before I spend my time on it. Although if you've seen this video, that means it worked. I guess I could just make this hole larger in the design. It's a size six screw like that. So this goes here. All right, so let's get some super glue action going. Oh no, the air conditioner's turning on. Zero production value. Sexy female lawyer. All right. Okay, then this that goes like that. So there's our one millimeter gap there. I guess we should put this cap on first. So there's the skate bearing. And then here's this cap. And then uh, I'm going to countersink this. Uh, that's something else that should. You know, if I put this on Thingiverse, I mean, if this works, I'm sure someone's going to want to print it. Actually, if it works, I'll probably print another one and give it to like a friend of mine. Actually, I know I have multiple friends that probably want this. If it works. I've, for years, I've thought about making like a. <laughs> No, for, for many years I've dreamed of making a beer holster because you know like if you're at like a convention or something you know you're like walking around of course you're drinking and you're also usually like you know doing stuff you're like picking up something or touching something or shaking someone's hand and it's like yeah it's kind of hard to hold a beer while I'm doing other things oh I need to countersink more keep the skate bearing in place it's actually getting a little, little bit of a wobble so I think I will reduce the tolerance for the next iteration. All right, so this goes here, and this goes here. And it's not threaded, but this will this will thread. It'll 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 get threaded. <laughs> it'll be a, a thread by fire, kind of like a trial by fire, but with threading. A uh, loaded up Fusion 360 on my downstairs computer here, so I can. Uh, make these changes before I forget what I did. Because, you know, I'm I'm old now. I'm 46. Junior! <laughs> Isn't that how old Harrison Ford was in Last Crusade? Probably around there. Oh, is it compressed? Whee! <laughs> Flashback to 1979. Cool kids never had the time. Oh, it's that support material. 
I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for your pesky support material. Now, turned out these needed to be half inch flathead screws. And I've adjusted the file to have a chamfer built into it. So people in the future building this won't have to countersink it. Whoa! <laughs> I'll be here all week, try the veal. Let's try another one. And the rest just repeats, doesn't it? Now the real question. How accurate were the website measurements for these washers? Hmm. Pretty good. Here's a pack of 10, so... Well, yeah, I did have, like, a variance, so... Yeah, so that's our weighted bottom. And how are we going to hold it in place? Of course, our friend... Our friend, our lover, hot glue. That will still be in there when the pyramids are dust. Yeah. I think Bud is like halfway between a fine boy and him chonk. Okay, I reprinted this with a different printer and it has less insane support material. Ah, finally. Oh yeah, this one's quite clean inside. This was sliced by Simplify 3D. So finish your whiskey or beer. Drain holes are coming in handy already. Now in the case of this uh, weighted end piece, obviously it had to be separate with a concavity so I could put the washers inside of it, but oftentimes I'll design things for 3D prints in multiple pieces anyway, because you know, there's always an optimum orientation in which to print it. Like in the case of the cup itself, I wanted to print it printed like that. So if there's one part of the print that would be better printed at a different angle, I'll actually make it in multiple pieces so I can print each piece in the best orientation and then I'll screw everything, everything together afterwards. A flaw in my design, since this piece here doesn't actually rotate, I should have made it like a square or a triangle or something so that it won't rotate when you're trying to put in the screw. So I should probably fix that before I put this on Thingiverse so other people won't have to suffer like I did.
How did you know your fingers wouldn't get hit by the drill bit? Why, son, I used proprioception. What's that? That's your sixth sense, sonny boy. I thought only Haley Joe Osmond had a sixth sense. Rubbish! The sixth sense is all around you. Proprioception is your brain knowing where your limbs are in space. Technically your sixth sense. It's like that drunk test where the cop tells you to close your eyes and touch your fingers together. Okay, it's all done. I had to put a bunch of uh, super glue on this to hold it in place. I made a new version of this that has a uh, the hex shape on it. So if I build another one of these for my buddy, uh, it should be, uh, this part should be improved. All right, well, I think I'm ready to test this thing out. The stairs. Well, I'm convinced. <laughs>